Limitless Wrestling fans, it's another edition of the Limitless Wrestling Podcast. Bracketology coming to your ears. John Alba joined by the czar of Limitless Wrestling, Mr. Randy Carver. And I'm not going to waste any time. I'm back. And boy, I'm better than ever, Randy. The bitch is back. Oh, you bet your butt he is. Mmm. Oh, God. Man, what an electric feeling it was to walk out in front of that max capacity crowd. Yeah, max capacity, okay. It was max capacity, to be fair. Capacity was very low, but it was max capacity. yes. <laughs> and, and, and preach the gospel of the outlier. I'm back, baby, in Limitless Wrestling. Oh, God, it feels so good. What what, what made you lift it, Randy? What what convinced you that, okay, now's the time? Well, uh, I, I guess you got a smart client on your hands in Mac Daniels. We put out the, uh, the match graphic last week, the four-way qualifier, which we're going to talk about here to kick off the show. If you haven't seen it, it's available for free on youtube.com slash limitless wrestling. You can also stream it on IWTV and it's on our Facebook page. But your boy, Mac Daniels, making his official limitless wrestling debut on a full fledged limitless show here and has an opportunity right off the bat for a championship shot to get in the Vacation Land Cup. He went up against Tyree Taylor, CJ Cruz, and Ricky Archer. And uh, I guess we didn't lose. Mac Daniels, you know. Learned a thing or two from the weasel, weaseled his way to get John Alba back in Limitless Wrestling. Oh, God, what a moment in time. It will be on our next five-year anniversary top moments in Limitless history countdown. It was. I don't know about that. I do not believe that to be true. You know, I heard the disdain in yours and Johnny Torres' voice during that, and I just couldn't understand why. You know, because I knew that you were going to come out. I knew you were going to take the microphone from Ethan Scott. And we were going to get read the riot act from John. John calling in from Florida, you know. I mean, we get it on the podcast every week. And now it's back in front of our eyes. Well, I hope the world world got to see what Mac Daniels was capable of in that match. Crushing Tyree Taylor right in the mush with that boot. It was beautiful. It was yeah, everything I right wanted. across the nose. And then he got leveled with a clothesline. Do you remember that? No. Discus Lariat? No. Ring a bell? I d- it doesn't. I was very concerned coming up with strategy for how we would win the match. And unfortunately, because Tyree Taylor likes to get his paws over things that he has no right touching, uh, Mac Daniels came to my aid. And as the good friend and client that he is, uh, looked after me. And I'm so grateful that he would pass up his opportunity at the Limitless Wrestling Championship to look after my well-being. You're grateful that your boy did not go try to win the match for a championship opportunity and instead looked out for you. Blood is thicker than water, Randy. And I was very, very appreciative that he looked after my well-being because guess what? There will always be other matches. There will always be other chances. When you look like Mac Daniels, they come to you so easily. And, and they will be there for him. Uh, you were telling me off air how impressed you were with him. So don't try to fib your way on here and act all kayfabe for the people listening here. No, no, no. You were very I, I impressed didn't say, I didn't say I wasn't impressed with him. That's not what I said at all. I said with an opportunity like that in front of you, so early into your career, a chance to cement yourself in limitless wrestling. I don't know if I passed that up for my good boy, John. Well, it didn't matter because CJ Cruz cheated to win, Randy. I saw it. You saw it. He had the tights. We didn't hey. cheat. I mean, okay, uh, talking about me acting kayfabe, you got your paws all over, Ricky Archer. Did Eric Greenleaf Cruz, call anything? Did Eric Greenleaf call anything? Listen. First, listen. you had the audacity to put me in a match with Eric Greenleaf after everything we've been through. You guys, I mean, you, I felt a connection on the podcast a few <laughs> weeks ago. I think the listeners did as well, and I'm just trying to do right by the listeners, as we always do, and, I, I you know, some chemistry there. With Eric Greenleaf and John Alba, and uh, I didn't really just I didn't want to you know put you put you without not get your fix of Eric Greenleaf while you were up here. I wanted you to get the whole package. Well, C.J. Cruz did, as far as I saw it, cheat to win here. He caught the tights on his own tag team partner. 
He did. And I think, uh, I think the urgency of what lied ahead, the opportunity that lied ahead for all these guys, I think it probably puts you in a different state of mind because all four of these guys have not been anywhere close to a limitless championship opportunity. And that's not a knock on these guys, but uh, it's a testament to how hard it is to get there, how hard it is to climb the ladder, to climb the mountain, to get to the mountaintop. Uh, there, there's a lot of opportunities to go around in limitless wrestling, but not necessarily for the championship. So uh, with everything on the line like that, CJ Cruz, uh, maybe in a moment of disarray, a moment of, uh, I'm not sure, but his tag team partner, Ricky Archer, uh, I think that's the way that CJ believed he had to win this match because the cruise control dropkick wasn't hidden. He couldn't keep Ricky down for the three before. And probably with Tyree and Mac Daniels not at ringside, that opportunity just seems uh, even more enticing. I can't believe that Ricky Archer had to walk away from that, knowing that his tag team partner stole one from him. And I can't imagine that that's going to lead to some great things ahead for them. You got to imagine that Ricky Archer's going to have his eyes on CJ Cruz now. I would believe so. Uh, Ricky Archer actually. Uh, talked a bit post-match, uh, I think with the camera crew, but at least with Ethan Scott. And uh, I got the interpretation that maybe we'll see these two collide on season two of the road. That might be how quick uh, this thing boils over because I think uh, I think at the end of the day, Ricky understood, but uh, it certainly didn't sit well, not with an opportunity like that on the line, not in any match period, but uh, especially with Ricky Archer nearing a victory having a chance at the limitless wrestling championship it's not sitting well that's for sure and i would like my boy to have a shot at tyree after what tyree tried to pull here (laughs) trust me i would like tyree to have a shot at your boy so uh don't worry too much about that Mm. i don't i don't like where you're coming out here okay sounds to me like you're up to something you just put it on the table i just said it just sounds to me like you're up to something up to something good yeah well this match did stream for free on the limitless wrestling social platforms and as you said on iwtv you enter that promo code limitless you get five days for free which is awesome because we've got this amazing show coming up here in four days now so how about that wow crazy how that works out crazy so we have the limitless wrestling vacation link up i guess we need to explain uh what happened here uh, we we talked about it a little bit last week with Myron Reed, so so Myron is totally out. So so now CJ is in, and we have our full bracket. We do, yeah. CJ's in in place of Myron Reed had some travel issues, so not going to make it to the event, and that opened up the opportunity for CJ, who now uh, has a very very big test ahead of him in the first round. Do you want to dive right into this? Yeah, I, I think we should, and then we'll hit on everything else that we got coming up here on Limitless this week because the Vacation Land Cup, not the only thing. We'll talk a little bit about the road. But listen, the Vacation Land Cup's what's on everyone's mind, and I've learned in TV that you put the most important things first, and this is the biggest event in Limitless Wrestling history. So it's time to break things down here, man. We're opening up this bracket contest once again. We did it last year. <laughs> Had to make some... Uh, adjustments on the fly last year <laughs> with everything that went down yes but we are yeah, was, very uh, confident this year bracket. we are very confident this year that the bracket is set in stone so we can open this up what's the deal yeah so uh 100 confident this is set in stone uh we did have quite a weird bracket last year but Uh, The bracket competition open once again. We've posted a blank bracket to all of our social medias. Uh, You can submit in the comment section on Facebook. You can submit on Twitter under the post or use the hashtag VLC bracket. We've got some cool swag coming in for the VLC this year. Uh, Some stuff we haven't done before for past tournaments. Some show specific stickers. Some t-shirts coming in uh, with the event poster done by Dave Cole that look unreal uh we've got some 11 by 17 posters already printed up available you can find all that limitlesswrestling.com slash vlc 2020 uh, it's going to be updated throughout the week but for this contest we are going to give away some stuff that we aren't releasing to the public uh some random limitless swag it's going to be quite a package so if you want to submit 
you want to put your bracket down, fill it out. Uh, you can fill out the winners, and then there's one through four. Yeah, you need it's to a fill that out. Dance final. You need to fill that out. That's the it. order of elimination. Yes, yeah, because it's this is four way dance elimination style, uh, similar to the ECW uh, three way or four way dances, where uh, four competitors start. Eliminations can occur by pinfall or submission. We're down to the final two. Last man standing is your winner and new limitless wrestling champion so fill that out number one is your winner number four being the first eliminated you can submit those and if you get it right you're going to win a swag package you could submit those up until the show so once the show starts submissions are closed and that's going to be your way to get in it's awesome way to interact with the limitless faithful and Man, who knows? Maybe we've had people who've already gotten it right yet. Uh, who knows? Uh, you got a few days here to figure it out, but if you feel confident in how things look, put it out there. We want to see what you've got to say because we have our opening round matches entirely set here, and it's time to do some bracketology. We're going to go through these seeds. Uh, again, I, I last year I ranked the seeds, and I'm going to be doing the same this year. And I don't know if you had a chance to rank your seeds, Randy, but... I think that we are in a situation where we have eight guys. Some are less experienced than others in the world of limitless wrestling. Others are guys who are staples in this company. And we'll see what combination of experience versus raw skill set translates here and how that works out here. But I'm, I'm curious to see how you've got this thing shaking out. Did you get a chance to rank your competitors, or would you like to just go through the matchups here? I didn't, but I'm very interested to hear your rankings and going through it. Um, I think there's a very interesting edge to a show like this where um, I look at a match like Lee Moriarty, Daniel Garcia, for instance, and on a normal uh, Limitless Wrestling platform, like, if we had fans in the seats, everything was normal. I almost feel like this match would uh, would kind of lean in the favor of Lee Moriarty. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, the home field advantage, what I'm getting at is the home field advantage or disadvantage of the fans liking you, disliking you, providing that energy, or uh, just throwing hate your way throughout the match. That's gone. That, that entire element is uh, pretty much eliminated right now. So for someone like Lee Moriarty, he's got a clean slate coming in here. The fans, they're not going to be automatically behind him necessarily. Uh, whereas a normal Limitless show, you know Daniel Garcia is going to hear it from the Yarmouth faithful. Yeah. So first off, we got to put over a few things here. First off, special shout to Sean Ross Sapp for chatting with Lee Moriarty. And they talked about the Vacation Land Cup a little bit over on Fightful. You can go check out that interview on YouTube right now. And to Bill, Pritch Bill Pritchard of WrestleZone, who I thought had a great interview with Daniel Garcia. And it's very clear Daniel Garcia is extremely focused on this match, Randy. Yeah, I think he's locked in right now. Um, I feel like for a long time he's been someone who's uh, been locked into the world of professional wrestling and uh, his overall improvement, continuing to get better and continuing to make adjustments. Um, but especially right now where I think he's had so much time to think so much time to prepare. He's changed up his style a little bit, heading into this matchup with Lee Moriarty. And, uh, I think all that preparation time with someone like Daniel Garcia standing across the ring from you can be dangerous. Yeah. This is my number four versus six matchup. Daniel Garcia is my number four seed. Lee is my number six seed. I think that's just because even though and we've talked about it on this podcast, Lee has really had a hell of a 2020. He still is relatively new on the national scene, and we know what he's capable of doing, and that Tiger style that he embodies is incredible to watch. But Daniel Garcia has been here before in Limitless, and as we mentioned in the past, he and Christian Casanova were pretty much on a collision course for that number one contendership. So I think he carries a little bit of advantage here, and I think if I'm making my picks here, I'm probably going with Daniel Garcia. But maybe it's just because I don't know enough about Lee Moriarty. Maybe Lee Moriarty is going to steal one here. That's interesting. I think uh, you're uh, not to 
be funny here, but you're an outlier with that one. Oh uh, yeah. From the brackets, from the brackets that I've seen at least so far, uh, I think a lot of people siding with Lee Moriarty on this one. Uh, it'd be a hell of a way to debut for the Apex of Combat if he can get himself to the finals. But uh, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen something crazy at the Vacation Land Cup. I think uh, both years that we've seen the Cup, there's been some surprises, especially in the finals. And Lee Moriarty looks to do that, looks to wow the Limitless Wrestling fan base. He hasn't found himself up in New England very much. So what a way to start here. But Daniel Garcia, uh, like we just said, locked in right now, yeah. has been doing his prep work. I just on Lee think, Moriarty. Randy, like, and I, again, this isn't an upset for me because I do have Daniel as a four here and Lee's a six. I think a lot of people are just sleeping on Daniel Garcia. And maybe I mean, he likes it that disagree. way. I, maybe he prefers that. I think uh, I think a piece of that has to be the lack of lack of what what he's done lately, because there just hasn't been a lot of shows lately that have seen Daniel Garcia on them. Uh, up until probably the past couple months, uh, I think we really only saw him a couple times throughout the summer. So uh, I think Lee Moriarty may have had the luxury of being uh, a part of a few more shows throughout the pandemic era of wrestling. Uh, I look at the collective weekend as well. I think Lee Moriarty had standout performance after standout performance there. And I just think it's the lack of recency of Daniel Garcia. I just think a lot of people uh, may not have seen his stuff lately because it has been a while since he's been wrestling consistently. So this could be his chance to really uh, wake people up, make them see that Red Death is not something to snooze on. Well, don't snooze on this one. J.D. Drake versus Kevin Blackwood. J.D. Drake is my number three seed. Kevin Blackwood is my number five seed. I'm going with J.D. Drake here, and here's why. J.D. Drake has been so close to breaking through that national scene, right? Like, he has been knocking on that WWE door for so long. There's no reason he shouldn't be on these AEW dark tapings or truthfully dynamite this guy has everything the blue collar badass who we saw sponsored in sports in, featured rather in sports illustrated this past week a big thank you to justin barrasso for that i thought that was an excellent feature that he did on jd drake and i think this guy is so hungry i think he almost got caught by alec price at the end of last year and he wants to come in and based on that sports illustrated piece he wants to be the ace of Limitless Wrestling. He's very serious about that. Because coming in as a tag guy with the work horseman and now getting this chance to flourish as a singles guy, I, I don't think he's going to let that slip by him. And Kevin Blackwood is a veteran in this tournament, but I just think the size ultimately gets to him here. I think it's a tall test for Kevin Blackwood, um, but, but I also think there's something very dangerous about someone who doesn't have much to lose. And Kevin Blackwood did not have a great end to 2019 as it pertained to wins and losses in Limitless Wrestling after really having the summer of his life. Uh, last year at the Vacation Land Cup was his comeback to professional wrestling after a number of months off after a life-threatening car accident with the Buffalo crew. He came back. Not only did he compete in the VLC, he defeated Christian Casanova in the first round, made it to the finals, his first finals appearance, actually pinned JT Dunn, the inaugural winner, eliminated him first, so he has that finals experience. And uh, I think after tw uh, his 2019 concluded the way it did, his 2020, he didn't get back on track, lost in a four-way in January, entered himself in the MSP Tag Invitational in February, did not come out victorious there either. I think he understands the complexity of what lies ahead. and He knows you know, how to get to the finals. He has that experience. I think there has to be something there. But J.D. Drake, like you said, not going to squander this opportunity. I think one of the best unsigned talents right now in professional wrestling. And I think it's crazy that he's not on television, but that makes me happy that he's here in Limitless Wrestling uh, looking for his first shot at the Limitless Wrestling Championship. What did you make of some of the things he said in that Sports Illustrated piece? Uh, I think it, I, I mean, I, I've been lucky to have, like, just sit down and have some conversations during a show or post-show with J.D. Drake and got to know him and... Uh, I think it speaks a lot when an interview comes off just like you're talking to that dude. Like he, He's such a real guy. Um, talks about his inspiration right now, kind of being his kids and wanting to show them that hard work can pay off, and that someone like him can do what he does. And uh, fuck, he's just – he's an incredible talent. 
And uh, I really enjoyed the interview with Justin Barrasso. If you haven't checked it out, definitely do. We posted it the other day. Uh, and Justin's done a few thus far. I actually talked to Alec Price before J.D. Drake. So a couple good pieces there. But uh, I, I really like the J.D. Drake piece. I think he's riding a high right now heading into this tournament. My gut tells me the Vacation Land Cup isn't going to be done featured in Sports Illustrated just yet either. So be on the lookout. Just my gut. Ace Romero and Alec Price. Alec Price, I'll say this. He's incredibly talented, but I also think he's gone a little lucky. But maybe he's made his own luck. Maybe that fearlessness has put him in this opportunity. And I have him as my number seven seed here, still because he's relatively inexperienced, against my number two seed in Ace Romero. And I'm picking Ace Romero because Ace Romero, I don't think anyone's hungrier to win this thing than Ace Romero, truthfully, because I think Ace Romero has come so close so many times to finally proclaiming his spot in Limitless. We've seen so many different phases of Ace Romero during his five years in Limitless Wrestling. Now his buddy, his frenemy, Anthony Green, is no longer in the picture. This is his chance to claim his spot. And I, I know that these two have gone to war before, and they've traded wins, but, man, I just don't see Ace Romero letting this opportunity go. Someone mentioned something to me the other day that kind of stuck with me that almost all of Ace Romero's losses in Limitless Wrestling were tied to Anthony Green in some way, shape, or form. Pretty much. Which is like kind of crazy to think about because I think they're uh, two of the most winningest wrestlers in Limitless history, but uh, it's not an untrue statement. Uh, I think Alec Price is a little low on your list, to be perfectly honest, and I understand uh, he's so new to Limitless Wrestling, didn't make his official debut until October 2019, but, I mean, you look back just a few months ago on the Rhodes Season 1, he defeated your number two Ace Romero. This is the rubber match between the two of them. Uh, each have a win thus far, and I don't know, man. A Alec Price has been lethal lately on the road. He's been putting out some of his best stuff, and uh, Ace Romero, I mean, you're you're 100% on the nose. He's so hungry for this. This is all he's wanted since the championship was introduced in March of 2019, and he's been working his ass off to get here. And now, really, in my opinion, the only thing that's held Ace Romero away from this championship has been multi-man matches. And ironically enough, that's what we find in the finals of the VLC. So if he wins, he's going to have to face that fate one more time. But uh, maybe this is the time for AC Baby. And with how things ended for Ace last year in the VLC, you got to think he's angry about that, too. I mean, so close. He's, he's been so close on so many occasions. The VLC last year, losing to Anthony Green in the finals. I look back at uh, January of this year, the triple threat of Anthony Green, Christian Casanova, Ace Romero for the Limitless World Championship. It's, there's been numerous occasions where it's been just at, in his hands and slipped through his fingertips, but uh, this could be the time. The last match, Christian Casanova versus CJ Cruz. If you couldn't figure it out yet, my number one seed, Christian Casanova versus my number eight seed, CJ Cruz. CJ squeaks his way into this match. Maybe doesn't get the scouting time that he'd like against the top talent, Christian Casanova. And I don't think I'm alone here, Randy, because I've been looking at a lot of these brackets that have been submitted, and a lot of people think Christian Casanova's taken this whole thing and I, at the very least, that I can share with you now, have him winning this one. But I don't think it'll be easy. These are two guys who know each other pretty well, uh, e even though Cruz is still relatively young. So I've seen both sides of the coin with this. Uh, a lot of people do feel that Christian Casanova, uh, especially having the advantage of being here before, having the Vacation Land Cup experience, um, a lot of people are taking him to win this match. But on the other side, I have seen a few people really ride with C.J. Cruz, think he's going to get the upset, think he's going to move to the finals, and a, a few people have picked him to win. Well, and think about this. in sports when that playoff team, that wild card team, gets hot at the right time, right, and they make that run. Yeah, and uh, this would be – legitimately monumental for cj cruz and i mean we've talked about this a little i think i mentioned it on the uh kings of wrestling podcast that comes out later this week give that a look um that 
just I mean, we, we've seen so many examples that anything can happen in Limitless Wrestling. And CJ Cruz has kind of been an embodiment of that throughout his time in Let's Wrestle, throughout his time in Limitless Wrestling. Uh, he just makes it happen. And this would be quite a story for CJ Cruz if he can not only knock off a tournament favorite in Christian Casanova in the first round, but can somehow string together multiple wins throughout a week. So he needs three wins in a week, which is tough to come by in Limitless Wrestling. But if he can get three wins in a week, make his way to, like, it'd be crazy. But I, I think you can't overlook Christian Casanova regardless of how good the story is to tell. Yeah. Because I, Christian has been at the top of his game, whether it's been on the road, whether it was earlier this year for Limitless Wrestling, uh, e- even throughout the pandemic, the few times that we've seen him wrestle, he's been absolutely on point, putting on size. He looks like a million bucks right now. And they do have some familiarity with each other. These are two students of the New England Pro Wrestling Academy. They've trained together, but never been in the ring in this kind of capacity with this much on the line. Christian spoke with Mike Killam of ProWrestling.com this past week, which I thought was an excellent interview, and I highly encourage everyone to check it out. What was your takeaway from that interview? Because I just saw Christian came out so focused and so cool, calm, and collected about this tournament. He, he just has all that swagger right now, and I was talking to Mike about it after he spoke with him, and he wasn't super familiar with Christian going into the interview, but afterwards and do, after doing some research, he said to me, he's like, I see it, man. That This guy is a legit top talent. Yeah, and uh, I think after watching that interview with Mike, because that came out, they actually broke the news of the uh, he, he was going to face the winner of the four-way qualifier. So what really stuck out to me was that being dropped on Christian and it having really no effect on him who was going to win that match. Could have been CJ, could have been Matt, could have been Ricky, Tyree. He was locked in regardless of who it was and seemingly already prepared for whoever that was going to be winning that match. So um, that that spoke volumes to me about where Christian is right now, especially with his uh, – he's just motivated. He's kind of on another level than we've seen him on before, and I think uh, he really understands that it's you know now or never, right in front of him right now, the opportunity to, be, to become Limitless Wrestling champion. So my final four is Casanova, Romero, Drake, and Garcia. I have Garcia being eliminated first, Drake being eliminated second, and then I have Christian Casanova winning the Vacation Land Cup and the Limitless Wrestling World Championship over Ace Romero, who once again comes up just short. And I hope Ace doesn't want to kill me after making that prediction. I might get a DM from Ace Romero after this. <laughs> he but, does listen to the podcast. But listen, man, you know how high I am on Christian. And I just, I look at Christian. And it's one of those things where you just talked about before with J.D. Drake, where you're like, you're fortunate that he's here. But I just think the entire world of professional wrestling is sleeping on this guy. And I, I don't know how someone hasn't extended him that offer yet. And he talked about in that interview with Mike, where he said, you know, I'm in control of my own destiny now. And I do think that. I agree with that. I think he is in control of his own destiny. And he came so close earlier this year with that triple threat match. And then as we've talked about, he was going to be facing Daniel Garcia. He's come so close. This is all he's wanted. He's locked in. He's razor focused. I think Christian Casanova is going to win this thing. What do you make of all that? It's a big prediction. Uh, I think some people are right. I believe I saw someone post that exact bracket actually earlier this morning. So uh, you've at least got some people on the same page. Uh, typically, I think uh, most of the brackets I've seen so far are either leaning towards Ace Romero, Daniel Garcia, or your pick, Christian Casanova. I've seen a lot of love for Lee Moriarty as well. A lot of people think that he's going to make the most of his Limitless Wrestling debut and become the new face in one night. But eight gentlemen have the opportunity this Saturday, IWTV, 7 p.m. You can sign up with the promo code LIMITLESS. It gets you a five-day free trial. So you can actually watch this show absolutely free. Um, definitely check it out. It's we, we got more to talk about from it, too. But this tournament, I, I think, is uh, just it's going to blow some people away. 
and I'm, I'm super excited that we were able to get this out there this year in such a weird year. Uh, it, it means a ton to have the support that we do. It means a ton to have all these interviews that we've talked about. There are more to come as well uh, with all this VLC, the, the media hustle. Uh, you've done a, a, an amazing job connecting a lot of that up, so I thank you for that. Uh, our sponsors as well, Ringside Rant. Uh, and Neo Reality Entertainment. We want to thank them for sponsoring our specifically the matches on the VLC uh, tournament and non-tournament. So a big thank you to them. But here's what we need you guys doing when this show airs. You need to be on social media using that hashtag VLC2020 talking about these matches. We want this thing to be trending on Saturday night. We want this to be the most talked about show in pro wrestling this weekend. And we think we can make it happen. I think so. I think so. Absolutely. I think, and just like, I, I'm very glad that, uh, because there was a point in time where we thought about this show just being the tournament, specifically just the four opening round matches and the four way dance final. Um, I'm super happy that we were able to kind of go with a full fledged limit of the show here. Yeah. And we're yeah. going to get into the non tournament matches in just a second, but. Um, it's a testament to uh, the support that we've had from the fans, whether it's watching the road or uh, getting prepped for this show coming up and going to tune in on Saturday. So a uh, quick thank you to them as well. And as Randy said, this is a full-fledged show. This is, this is exactly the kind of experience you would get going to a Limitless Wrestling show in person. So you're going to get those five matches we know about, and there's four more, including one we're going to break right here. And I guess we can talk about it. It's going to be the uh, opening contest of the entire pay-per-view. It is. Davey N., the first ever Let's Wrestle champion, our sister promotion. Uh, she was around for the early days of Limitless Wrestling, the Orono days, the original Orono days. Um, and now has become a building block, really, of Limitless Wrestling in 2020. Uh, throughout the road series, even back at Pandemic at the Dojo, she's had an incredible string of matches throughout the year and has worked her way into a consistent spot here in Limitless Wrestling. She's going one-on-one with Becca, who I believe has been one of the most impressive rookies, not only in Limitless Wrestling, but in independent wrestling here in 2020. One of the toughest years in history to really break out and make a name for yourself on the scene. I think she's done that, and she could do it again with a victory over Davian. What an amazing opportunity for her. Absolutely. I mean, she's earned it. Bo- both these ladies have earned it. Um, but Becca, I mean, just consistently uh, rising to the occasion on the road. And uh, I think Davian is a really fun. I'm not sure, uh, not 100 percent, if this is a first time ever collision because they do train in the same circles. But this is the first time it's ever happened in Limitless Wrestling. So I'm very excited to see it. Are we going to be selling Limitless Wrestling scrunchies soon? Hey, I think I think Becca will probably have her own scrunchy line in 2021. That's probably on the uh, the bucket list for her. Get some get some Becca specific scrunchies out there. Maybe some different patterns. She, I mean, she's so nice. Like she gives them away or tries to give them away to a bunch of people to join the scrunchy squad, and always gets kicked in the face for her kindness. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe that little extra flair of a uh, as she would say for a uh, custom Becca scrunchie would do the trick. Well, we got a match that if, if you like big old Japanese-style wrestling where Minoru Suzuki just beats up whoever he faces, well, we got a match for you. Rip Bison and Big Beef. This is a match for me. <laughs> <laughs> this, but, no, I, like, uh, I really wanted to structure this card with a little taste of something for everyone, uh, all different flavors of ice cream, as we typically try to do on a full-fledged Limitless show. So uh, this is going to be... A hoss fight, a strong style brawl. Uh, anything could happen and probably will happen. Buckle up. Uh, all the cliches. Rip Bison going one on one with Big Beef, first time ever. Big Beef Gnarls Garvin, uh, someone who I found in the pandemic era watching uh, different shows on IWTV, and I was very impressed with him. Uh, and I've just kind of made uh, packed with myself to try to bring someone new like that sort of under the radar in for uh, every kind of full-fledged show that we do from now on. So that was big beef this time. Uh, this was the match. Like, there was, you know, a ton we could do with big beef, but this stuck out to me to be the match for big beef to make his debut. Rip Bison's been on a tear 
Uh, the win loss record hasn't really been in his favor as of late. It didn't buy him but a it's, spot. But it's not reflective of the work he's putting in, though. Exactly. That's what I was getting at. Is that it, it may not have bought him uh, a shot in the Vacation Land Cup this year, but I mean, he's still on these shows. He's still right in the race, and a win here uh, would certainly put him back in contention to be fighting for a championship opportunity. So, is this a first I'm time ever match? He's too loose. What's that? Is this a first time ever match? This is a first time ever. I think this is Big Beef's first time in this neck of the woods period. I don't think he's cool. been in the Northeast at all. Well, we got the Prestige versus the Beverage Barons. Big opportunity here for Channing Thomas and your boy, uh, Mr. Goslin against, well, Megabyte Ronnie and, and Puff, two guys that it's very unconventional. I don't know. This is, this is an unconventional match. It's an interesting one um, because I've been talking with the main state posse for a while. And one of the big goals of 2020 before everything kind of shut down was to really revamp and revitalize the Limitless Tag Division. We've just had so many teams uh, either disband, get signed, or uh, just not able to use maybe one half of them anymore. So a lot of the tag teams in Limitless Wrestling over the past year or so uh, have kind of gone by the wayside. So this is an interesting one because these are two teams who were, I believe, set to debut earlier uh, in this year, but the pandemic made that impossible. So two teams who have been ready to go for quite some time, making both of their tag team debuts, not only in Limitless Wrestling, but as a tag team. The Prestige, the Beverage Barons, Channing Thomas and BRG, you may have seen them on the road, a couple Let's Wrestle alumni making their way up, and I, I think they're ready for the opposition, but Puff, Megabyte Ronnie, the hungriest wrestler in pro wrestling. Uh, if you haven't seen them, go check them out. They're on AEW Dark this summer. You can also check out Puff, obviously, in the uh, Limitless Wrestling Archives, either on YouTube or IWTV. I'm always excited to get Puff back in the house. And now he's got a new tag team partner, so we'll see how it goes for both teams. Now, I heard some rumors going around the Let's Wrestle locker room about the tag team division that... I don't know. There, there seem to be some rumors going around about some big movement coming up soon. Because you just alluded to it. You said that you're trying to get that tag team division going. And what a way to do that with the main state posse versus the Sea Stars. And that, man, this match should deliver everything that we've wanted out of a tag team match in Limitless Wrestling. I believe so. This was a personal request from the main state posse when we kind of sat down and had that conversation uh really the first question was all right you know who, who's the first team that uh you guys are facing on the comeback tour because obviously uh speaking of tears Aiden Agro, uh a rotator cuff tear put him out of action for about six months he's been on the shelf we haven't seen him on the road the last we saw him was march of this year when he wrestled basic becca at pandemic at the dojo uh we haven't seen msp tags since february so it's been quite some time since Aiden Agro has really uh, got back in the ring to knock the rust off, but he's ready to go. He's been training in the Limitless Dojo week after week, anticipating this matchup. And the Sea Stars are so hot right now. They haven't really let 2020, the, you know, the, the shitty year that it's been, they haven't really let that ruin their momentum uh, as much as it really could have. Just making their Impact Wrestling debut. They were on pay-per-view the other night with Impact Wrestling. Uh, the longest reigning now Shimmer Tag Team Champions. So uh, they've been putting some work in still. And even in Limitless Wrestling, I think we've seen Delmi XO come so far over the summer into the fall. Uh, now she's making her debut on a full-fledged Limitless Wrestling show alongside her C-star, Ashley Vox. And uh, I'm so excited for this. It's crazy to me that this is a first-time ever match with all the shows that these two have shared throughout the years. But... Uh, I'm excited that it gets to happen under the roof of Limitless Wrestling. Very cool stuff. This is going to be a hell of a show, Randy. It's going to be a hell of a show. The Prestige versus the Beverage Barons. Rip Bison versus Big Beef. Davian versus Becca. The Mainstay Posse versus Sea Stars. Lee Moriarty versus Daniel Garcia. J.D. Drake versus Kevin Blackwood. Christian Casanova versus C.J. Cruz. And Ace Romero versus Alec Price. The winner of those four matches 
all going on to our four-way dance main event to crown the next Limitless Wrestling World Champion and the winner of the Vacation Land Cup. That is coming to you Saturday, December 19th on IWTV. Promo code LIMITLESS, five-day free trial. Enter it now. You're going to get that show for free. And remember, VLC 2020 on social media. Talk about the show. VLC bracket. Submit your bracket. That is everything you need to know about the Vacation Land Cup. But, Randy, before we go... We've got The Road, Episode 9, coming on Wednesday. And since we're talking about VLC, we're giving them a treat. Alec Price versus Christian Casanova. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people were anticipating that this was going to make it in the first round of the tournament. But uh, honestly, uh, the two matches that were originally scheduled for both these two were a little too enticing. Christian was going to go one-on-one with Myron Reed, now going one-on-one with CJ Cruz and Alec Price his rubber match awaiting with Ace Romero. So we're going to cut these two loose earlier. A few days before the VLC takes place, Alec Price, Christian Casanova is our main event this week on The Road, Episode 9. If you're listening to this Tuesday, it streams tomorrow night. And if it's Wednesday, it's tonight. Uh, IWTV, 7 o'clock every Wednesday. The entire library of The Road Season 2 and Season 1 are available on demand as well on IWTV. And it's a loaded week this week on Episode 9. And the Hives Boomer Hatfield going one-on-one with baby girl Nick Stapp. Nick Stapp looking some re- for uh, some revenge. Well, revenge, yeah. After, uh, uh, easy for me to say, after the Hive, just uh, multiple weeks in a row decimating whoever stands in their path. First, it was Kirby and Nick a couple weeks ago. Then Kirby wanting his shot at Hermit Crab, gets a win after getting the Hive booted from ringside, and then he takes a beating after the match. So Nick Stapp looking for revenge for his buddy and looking to take down Boomer Hatfield in a first-time ever meeting. Undefeated versus winless. Eric Johnson versus Love Doug. Love Doug a little in over his head here. I would say... Uh, Love Doug has not won a match in quite some time in Limitless Wrestling, never on the series, has not won a match on the road, and he could do so in style this week. Eric Johnson, I mean, we saw him bully Ethan Scott into an interview a couple weeks ago. He's just been really, uh, you know, I hate to use this term, but really swinging it around backstage as it pertains to uh, Ethan Scott and his interview segments. It's just... uh, really wanted to get his uh get his message out there i think he's someone who definitely feels slighted by not being considered and i can't say he wasn't considered but not being entered in the vacation land cup uh i think that really sticks in his craw and uh love doug i think is catching eric johnson at a bad time he's catching eric johnson on the hottest streak of his career and also pissed off and i think that's uh that's not the makings for a love story that love doug would like to see no no it's not and we have Channing Thomas versus Little Mean Kathleen. Another taste of Channing Thomas before uh, debuting alongside BRG. Hey, this how, go- Saturday. how good did Channing Thomas look in that burgundy blazer, by the way? Oh, it's it's pretty crisp. It's, it's very, pretty crisp. Very snazzy. But Little Mean Kathleen looking for her first victory here in Limitless Wrestling, and she'd love to make a name for herself off Channing's name. Before he makes his big debut alongside BRG, can you imagine what it'd do for little mean Kathleen to walk out of the road episode nine with a victory? She's going to try her best this Wednesday night. And why do we have that loser Doug Weiser coming back again? Well, I'm not really sure what Dougie's up to. It could be another dance break, but uh, I got word that he's hitchhiking down I-95. Heading down the road. No pun intended. Maybe pun intended, but uh, Doug Weiser will be there this Wednesday on the road, up to some shenanigans, I'm sure. Uh, one of your favorites, so I hear. <laughs> you know, we talk about scouting all the time and how important that is. Think about this, man. Alec Price and Christian Casanova, that could very well be the finals in this tournament. That could be the final, too. Yeah, I mean, they it, it could shake out that way. Christian would need to defeat CJ. Alec needs to get by Ace Romero one more time. And uh, you got to wonder, I mean, how much are they going to have left in the tank? I'm sure they're going to beat the hell out of each other this week on the road. And uh, I'm excited to see it. I think a lot of people are very excited for that matchup. And it could be a glimpse into the future. You never know. Well, Randy, this is your last chance to sell this show to people. So what should people have their eyes on as they head towards Saturday? 
Well, I, I mean, looking at it on paper, uh, I feel very confident that top to bottom, this is going to be one of the best shows in Limitless Wrestling history. And it's obviously not going to be like it was before. We miss the Limitless Faithful. We miss them in Yarmouth. And uh, there's no way that that energy can be replicated. But uh, I do want to connect with as many fans as possible this Saturday night. Like John said, use, use the hashtag VLC2020. Talk with us on social media. We'll be live tweeting throughout the entire show. Um, and I, I think it's just for, for a moment in time, for a few hours in time, uh, with our Limitless family kind of watching this thing, like I, I think we're going to feel some normality at least uh, take over for the time being. So uh, it'll be nice. It'll be nice this Saturday night as we crown the third Limitless Wrestling champion, MJF, Anthony Green, coming before this, who will take their career to the top who will punch their ticket who will join those two at the top of limitless wrestling we haven't had a champion since october since the end of season one losing anthony green as he signed with nxt congratulations to him but the time is now as we head into 2021 we'll have a new limitless wrestling world champion someone new to lead the charge here for the pine tree state pro wrestling party and i'm very excited to uh, witness this, to experience it with every one of you. So give it a watch. IWTV, this Saturday night, 7 p.m. Use the promo code LIMITLESS. Gets you a five-day free trial. If you want to, sign up for it now. Get caught up on the road. Uh, road is only hour-long episodes every Wednesday night, if that. Usually 45 minutes. So easy to watch. And maybe catch up. The, both previous Vacation Land Cups are available on IWTV. A ton of past shows. But we'll see you there Saturday night, 7 p.m. for the 2020 Vacation Land Cup. And just remember, if you need any other incentive to tune into this thing, well, I've got an answer for you, Randy. It's because... <laughs> yeah, I am. We'll see you guys next time here on the Limitless Wrestling Podcast. Baby.